Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. We have got an update on what's going on with Sir Jim Radcliffe's uh, attempt to buy a minority stake in Manchester United. Now, Sir Jim's deal uh, to become this minority stakeholder in the club is expected to be agreed during this month's international break. And there was some talk that things might be in place as of Monday next week, which is quite crazy. Uh, and he's expected that Radcliffe's Ineos Group will pay around uh, £1.25 billion pounds to buy a 25% stake of Manchester United. Now, the Glazer family uh, announced on the 22nd of November 2022 that they were considering uh, selling the club and that they were looking at um, all the different options that were available to them, uh, up to and including a full sale or a minority investment. Uh, Ineos and Qatari banker Sheikh Jassim bin Hamed uh, Al Thani both made offers, tabling bids of somewhere in the region of five billion. Neither bidder was seemingly willing to reach the Glazer family valuation, uh, and Joel and Avram uh, were, were known to be quite reluctant sellers um, for, for whatever reason that ended up being. Sheikh Jassim withdrew from the bidding process last month, claiming that his fi final bid thought to be double United's $3.2 billion, uh, uh, £2.64 billion stock market valuation, didn't meet the Glazer demands, which is wild. Uh, and Radcliffe had already amended his initial plan to buy the Glazer 69% shareholding and reduced it to a majority uh, sort of stake, or a majority sort of stake, um, seeing as though individually it will be the largest individual stakeholding that someone has in the club. However, it was only when it was reduced again to an anticipated uh, 25% that the potential for an agreement seemed possible. Not entirely clear what the structure of that deal will be. I believe from a legal standpoint, he has to take a 25% holding of the Glazer stock as well as the one that's available in public. So his his buy-in will be split across both of those. Um, and I don't know if there's any specific dates that Ratcliffe will be able to increase his shareholding. That seems to be what everyone is being told. Obviously, that I'm sure there'll be paperwork along with that. But until we are told, we can only assume. Now, we are led to believe that that is the, the plan. Um, and obviously, he can't come out and talk while he's under NDA. But I do expect, with an immediacy, once this goes through, that Jim Radcliffe comes out and gives us his plan for taking over the football club. Because the one thing that... One of the 200 things that the Glazers have really fucked up at, with Manchester United is the absolute lack of... Of communication it has not been anywhere near acceptable and i hope jim radcliffe if he's going to change anything starts with communicating what's going on to the fans it is believed that another 245 million will be made in additional funds uh, by radcliffe for infrastructure works related to the stadium how far 245 million goes is anybody's guess not very far i believe um and I think it's probably worth us just recapping for, for those who aren't aware, who is Jim Radcliffe? It's been reported uh, Radcliffe wants to assume control of the football operations of the club. Sources with a close working knowledge of Radcliffe told BBC Sport uh, it was impossible to imagine he would agree to be in a silent partner. Um, seemingly he does want to have his, his hands dirty with this. Uh, and those at United and in close proximity believe that the club is going to benefit from a new pair of eyes, uh, according to this report, looking at how it's run. It is expected the likes of Sir Dave Brailsford, uh, the performance director at British Cycling, is going to be heavy involved. Um, and because of this, um, the, the jobs of Richard Arnold... John Murta and supposedly Davis, David Harris are reportedly at risk following this takeover. So it seems like things have actually clicked up a gear and we look like we might have some um, resolution with this. And you know, we, we've spoken previously about uh, Jean-Claude Blanc. I've spoken loads about the likes of Paul Mitchell. If it's those three individuals that are coming on board, they do seem to have a bit more football savvy than the, the, the crew that we've got at the moment. Um, and the, the, there's a there's a lot of... Anyway, I was going to say, there was a lot of talk about uh, John Murter and, and how he came to have the job, but it, it is speculation. It's not a good idea. Either way. So, 
Um, AA says Simon Stone says it'll be 1.25 for 25%. He offered 5.3, according to Simon, uh, for 100%. How does this make sense? What are you struggling with? They decided they wanted to keep hold of it. What, what are you struggling with? Yeah, they, they would be happier with only 25% going than they would be with all of it going, by the looks of things. Um, Adam says, I think Arnold will stay on in financial position. I don't think anyone goes from CEO to not CEO in a, in a company. It's just a bad look, isn't it? So I think they'll move on. Uh, Bungle says, do I think Radcliffe will outline his ambition and ideas or will be left in the dark? I think he has to come out and outline his ideas. I don't think it's possible for him to come out and just be like, or, or to just to take over the club and to continue the, the Glazer MO, which is don't talk to the idiots. Like, that's not going to work, is it? Like, one of the major frustrations, like I said, amongst many, one of the major frustrations of the Glazers is they don't seem to want to talk to us. And we knew they didn't care about us. But the fact that they don't even talk to us just shows how much contempt they have for us. So if, if Jim Radcliffe actually has a connection to the club, which we are led to believe he does, you know, he was at the 99 final after all, uh, and I believe he, you know, he has been a lifelong supporter. I think everything that's going on with him and the the Chelsea fan link, I think that was him trying to appease Chelsea fans when he was trying to buy them. I don't, I don't, I think that was hammed up. Um, but I think he is doing it for the right reasons. Whether or not he's capable of getting the Glazers out is another thing. Um, but it's one of them, isn't it? Uh, Adam Barnett says Woodward went from CEO to another role. I don't think he had another role. I think he was just still a big shareholder. Like Woodward still got a lot of shares. Uh, Oliver Pace says Jim Radcliffe has made money taking over companies. He definitely has clauses to get rid of the Glazers. Well, we don't know what they are, so I don't think we can. I think we can say he probably has. I don't think you can say definitely. Um, Dean says the club cost them nothing, so Jim Radcliffe is literally letting them have their cake and eat it, it correct? Greg says the financial department has been run pretty well. It's the playing side that's run terribly. No, it's not. Can we stop this fucking nonsense that the financial department has been run well? How have you allowed 1.6 billion to drain out of the club in debt refinancing and interest payments and have the fucking gall to say that the financial department is running incredibly well? We've made a loss this year. How do you lose money with Manchester United? You see the likes of Barcelona turning over a billion a fucking season. All they did was copy what Manchester United did well. You cannot say the financial department is run well. You can't. We've got, we give contracts out at the fucking drop of a hat. How much do you want to be? Do you want to be the highest paid player in England? You don't have to play like it, but you can get paid like it. Boom, there you fucking go. We pay over the odds for people. You can't say the financial department of this fucking club has been run well because that's bollocks. Manchester United should have um, the biggest stadium sponsorship if we wanted to go down the route of selling Old Trafford. We should have the biggest shirt selling um records every single year but we don't we should have the biggest shirt sponsorship we should have uh, the biggest fucking commercial partnerships outside of that where's our fucking extra shit all the stuff that barcelona are doing and i'm not talking about selling off 25 percent of your tv rights for the next 25 years on the fucking never never i'm talking about the right here right now things that make manchester united competitive on the football pitch the fucking financial department is not well run don't give me that because it's fucking factually incorrect if it was that if it was that well run, if there was ambition in there to do innovative shit, they would do. But they don't. I'm not having that the financial department has been pretty well run. That's fucking nonsense. Uh, Jaren says, apparently Ineos doesn't want to make decisions on Ten Hag, but there will be rumours that the football structure will probably bring in another coach. Um, Greg says, the commercial revenue has increased. So is Luton's. In 18 years, there isn't a football club out there that's had their revenue decrease. Manchester United, right? If you go back and have a look at 1992, 93 to 2005 and see how much more than everybody, weirdly apart from Spurs, um, they were the closest ones to us in that time. Manchester United was absolutely shitting cash. And then the Glazers took over and our revenues went brrr. Martin Edwards had the football club running properly, both sides. The Glazers have fucking been asleep at the wheel. The only thing that they did, which was remotely impressive, was selling the name to the training ground, which, by the way, no longer has a sponsor. 
So you tell me how they fucking lose money on that, right? It's no longer the Aeon Trading Complex. It's the, is it called? The, it's not called Carrington, is it? Let me just have a quick look. It has another name. It's no longer the Aeon Trading Complex. Trafford Training Centre, right? So the Aeon Training Complex, which they sold for 109 million, that was fucking genius. That's the only thing that's been remotely fucking good that they've done. That's it. There's a, there's a training ground that no fuck is allowed to see, no one's allowed to go to, and we sold the naming rights to it for 109 million. Well done. Well played. Outside of that, what have they done? They've done fuck all. And not only have they done fuck all, they couldn't even renew that sponsorship. This is Manchester United, the most talked about fucking club on this planet, and probably on other planets as well, if we're being real with ourselves. And yet... The commercial department's done well. Out of boy, fuck you, fuck them, and fucking shut it. Abanov says we need a new sports science department um, and some juice from the Ineos cycling team, please. Um, Gok says he's dropping one point five bill, another three hundred mil to stop the leak and the new paint. Why would he put in another dime when he's already spent more than the Glazers ever have in a club? Correct. If he had a season ticket, he's already spent more than the fucking Glazers have. Bungle says, um, I'm worried with the online toxicity in the media agenda against us. He has failed before he even started. Right. Being very fucking real. Being very fucking real. Manchester United need to get back to being fucking bullies in terms of journalism, right? I've mentioned this a few times before. Um, Sir Alex Ferguson was a bully, right? He was a bully to his players, even though that they loved him. It was a bit of a bully relationship. And he was a bully to the press. And one of the reasons that United get shot on at the moment is because there's no fear. There is no fear you're going to lose your accreditation. None. They will get their accreditation. Because Eric Ten Hag doesn't have the, the money in the bank to be able to, to start banning journalists. But the club does. The press department at the club does, and the press department at the club should be like, excuse me, come here, uh, who do you work for? Talk sport, cool. See you in three months when you sort your shit out. Oh, yeah. Where are you from? The Sun? Yeah. Um, so this story that you wrote here about Onana, load of old bollocks, wasn't it? Yeah. Off your fucking pop, you're banned for three months. What's this one here? All oh, right, okay. Metro. Well, we know Metro don't attend press conferences because they don't have fucking real journalists. But do you know what I mean? Just start fucking banning dudes. Hey, where are you from? Evening news. <laughs> fucking, there's a the door, my friend. Stop talking shite. That's what we need to do. That is exactly what Manchester United needs to do. Start getting fucking ruthless with the press. Hi, Sky Sports. You might struggle with Sky Sports because they're TV rights holders. But if you start banning the fucking actual journalists that are coming in there and saying, oh, Sky Sports. Yeah, okay. So why is it a fucking three-week fucking campaign whenever Manchester United do something and when someone else does nothing, nothing. How's Jurgen Klopp get away with being such a prick in press conferences and still gets good press? Fuck you, banned. Uh, Garlic Bread says, Steve, considering United are a bit shit at the moment, why not watch the Cricket World Cup in India? Uh, India are slapping everyone every other day. Endless scope to laugh at England for coming last two. I'd rather moonwalk naked across the Etihad halfway line than watch cricket. I'd say when it was full, but that'd be in a derby, wouldn't it? Um, Giovanni says, Steve, do I trust ten, the process with Ten Hag? Yeah, I do. Uh, Johnny says, unlike the Glazers, he'd probably invest on the assumption success on the pitch would increase brand value far more than flirting between top four and mid-table, and I think he'd be correct in saying that, in all honesty. Um... Mighty Mo says, the problem is United view any publicity, good or bad, as positive. They report on it in their quarterly earnings report. Yeah, I mean, there was a sickening thing where they were buzzing about how much um, interaction we got on a fucking Twitter post about Nobby Styles being ill. Are you fucking serious? 
Uh, ben says, too ambitious leadership inside United. If anyone thinks this will be fine, uh, I mean, you'll never experience politics inside an institution or a company. Yeah, that seems a problem. If we are to believe that the, the Sheikh Jassim deal stalled on the basis that Sheikh Jassim mentioned returning United to the former glory, almost throwing shade at the current ownership, and they saw their ass with that, then you have to presume that anything Jim Radcliffe suggests, or anytime he goes, you lot of shit in a meeting... They're going to block him. It's worrying. Nay says, United should tell all the media houses, tell off all the media houses and let them scramble for crumbs from MUTV reports. Yep. Um, Gallic Bread says, to be fair, I think we can fill the Etihad easily if Steve actually does a nude moonwalk there. Um, Dan United says, what's the frame shirt and program behind you? That... It's the program from the Class of 92 game. And that's one of the replica shirts. It's not an original shirt. But it's got most of the players on there, like Gig Skulls, Neville. It's missing Beckham. I've got like Rafi Burke, Ben Farnley, uh, Robbie Sav, uh, and Rio. Because my son got Rio on it. Cheers. James in a super chat says, does our market for force to Jim to make a statement in the January transfer market to make sure a Champions League football next season. It might do. Um, Brian says, Paddock office getting more investment. <laughs> Where's that one gone? It's just disappeared. Um, Tino says, our club doesn't have the moral uh, values it used to before the Glazers. Uh, we need to get back to those and start setting the high standards once again. Totally agree. Uh, Ryan says, would be great for Jim to come in and include in his first announcement 100% backing of Ten Hag. I think we probably need that, yeah. Because I imagine all of this speculation amidst the poor form doesn't help. And Sir Alex Ferguson speaks about how all of the papers were saying that Nottingham Forest game was a watershed moment and it was either going to go up or down from there um, under Martin Edwards uh in the 89 90 season and you know, if we didn't win that game against nottingham forest it was out the door now sir alex has mentioned multiple times that um martin edwards called him on the morning of that game and said no matter what happens today you're still the manager of manchester united and he said that confidence give him the or the confidence in him from the board really fucking helped so yeah i hope that ten hag's getting that from jim radcliffe Uh, NWA says, what's going on with memberships at the moment? At Paddock website says there's no memberships while well, the app's being sorted. Any updates? What's happening? They're live. If you go on, maybe I need to check all the wording on there, but if you go on to uh, stratfordpaddockfc.com, uh, go to membership or fan ownership, and then there's two options there. There's a monthly option and there is a yearly option. They're, they're both um, right there. Um, Carl says, what would Paul Mitchell bring to us? I imagine he would probably bring a strategy for maximizing the profit that we get. Manchester United get our asses handed to us when we sell players. Like we sell players that are on the cusp of internationals or actual internationals and we get less. Like how do we sell Kovar and basically use all the money on Kovar to bring in Bayern It's insane. Insane. So we would have a strategy where we can make a bit more money on the sales of players because we've got a manager in there, a transfer manager in there that knows the market and knows the value of players and knows where to target those to, to get a good price for them. And we also don't get our asses handed to us because we can actually negotiate from a position of knowledge and power. Manchester United in buying Harry Maguire, right? Probably about a £50 million centre-half at the time and we paid 80 Wamba Saka was probably a 25, 30 million pound player that we paid 50 for. So United sat down and you could have got two more great players if you'd have bought them at the, the correct prices, right? And that's where we're going wrong. You know, we're spending as much as everybody else, but we're spending too much on individuals, which means that instead of getting two players, you know, we're getting one or instead of getting three, we're getting two. And that's how you, you, you improve this squad is you can still spend the same money, but we're getting more for our money. Like, Christian Eriksen was a great buy, right? But how few of them has there been all year? Um, Dean says, people also need to understand this. Uh, won't just get rectified overnight. The Glazers uh, have ruined us so much, it's going to take years to rectify. I agree. Ronnie says, do I think Mitchell will stop the United tax? Yeah, that's literally what I'm sort of saying. I think Mitchell comes in, having worked at all these different clubs, at all these different levels, with all these different explanation, uh, expectations, that he comes in and he sits down to negotiate with 
Leon. And instead of us paying 60 million for this new up and coming player at Leon, we pay 30 with a lot of add ons. It, it's those sorts of things that I think he improves. You know, and, and when United went to negotiate with the likes of Maguire, we went in and went 50 mil, and they went 80, fuck you. And we went, okay, 55 mil. And they went, 80, fuck you. And then that carried on almost to the end of the window, and we went, 80, yeah. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It's having someone that can actually sit down and have a genuine conversation with someone and pull up experience and go, okay, so I sold this player to these and 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 this is how much these guys are worth and this is where this guy sits in the ranking of the world and, okay, we'll give you another 7 million on top of what he's worth because he's English and there's a bit of an English tax and homegrown status and blah, 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 blah. But that's how much you're getting and that's how much he's worth. Bosh. Anyways, that's about doesn't it for me. I think there's going to be more news about this breaking over the weekend. But like I said, and I think you all agree with me, I mean, we need a statement, don't we? We need a, we need a, 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 a verbal or a written statement from uh, Jim Radcliffe. Here's what we're doing. This is what we're doing. So cheers to you guys for tuning in. Cheers for the comments. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we will have a preview out a little bit later on for how we're going to beat uh, Luton and it's not as straightforward as it fucking seems but we should be able to get the three points tomorrow but cheers for tuning in make sure to subscribe I'll catch you lot in the next one see you in a bit Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too.